Hello YouTube, it's Tony. So today I'll show you a 1 to 99 or 120 woodcutting guide for 2019. What I'll show you are the fast and the AFK methods. To start things off, here are the list of hatchets and their level requirements. Having a higher tier hatchet means higher woodcutting success. You can add hatchets to your tool belt by right clicking it. Also, you can add a rune or dragon hatchet in your tool belt even before you have the required levels. Yeah, so this will automatically use the highest tier hatchet before the rune hatchet. For example, let's say you have 21 woodcutting and you add a rune hatchet, right? This will use mithril hatchet when you're woodcutting even if you don't own this. The Dorvan army axe is obtainable from the Marin Birthorp, which I've marked right on the minimap. This axe is a steel hatchet, so yeah, it is better than iron or bronze hatchet. The Infernal Axe will burn the logs 33% of the time, but it's not needed since Superheat Form does this 100% of the time. Finally, the Crystal Hatcher requires Plagues In and 4000 Harmonic Dust. Moving on, we have the XP boost. First is the bonus XP from Stealing Creation. If you really want a guide on this mini game, I do have one, and I'll leave the link in the description. There are more to list, but these ones are the most common XP multipliers in the game. For woodcutting, there are so many useful items and unlocks. First is the Lumberjack Outfit. You'll get 5% more woodcutting XP if you're wearing the entire set. It is obtainable from Temple Trekking, and if you want a guide on how to get this fast, I do have this which I'll leave the link in the description. It requires 44 woodcutting and you have to complete 2 quests that are related to Temple Trekking. After that, we have the Sentinel Outfit. In order to obtain this, this is a rare drop from Treasure Hunter, or it requires 70 woodcutting to get the fragments. It also requires 20 invention and 80 woodcutting in order to craft the fragments into pieces. The oak, willow, and maple outfits all have the same effects. Not only will you get 5% more woodcutting success, but also the option to burn logs while you're woodcutting for fire making XP, which occurs 25% of the time. It also retains the Lumberjack Outfit XP boost if you own that, that is. If you combine all three sets, you'll form what is called the Nature Sentinel Outfit. This time the woodcutting success is bumped to 7% and you get the ability to locate evil trees. On top of that, you also get to spawn a daily mini evil tree, which will give you around 20k XP per day in 2 minutes at level 99 woodcutting. The next useful item we have is the Dorvan Chain Axe. This is a treasure hunter item and you can obtain this from a Dorvan toolbox. There are two different modes you can toggle, which is double resource mode or the double XP mode. Each tool will last you 100 charges. Unfortunately, this does not work on double XP weekend, so keep that in mind. After that, we have the invention woodcutting perks. Only dragon or crystal hatchet is augmentable. Here are the best perks. The first perk we have is honed, which increases the woodcutting success by 2% per rank. Then we have Furnace perk, and there's a 5% chance per rank to consume the resource for full XP. I've written you the best combinations for Hone 5 and Furnace 3 or Furnace 2. Sliski's Endgame Rewards The most notable reward that helps for woodcutting is the Ring of Whispers. That will give you 5 invisible woodcutting levels. By wearing all 3 pieces of Sliski's Endgame Rewards, you'll get this effect called Manifested Knowledge. The next section I'll get into are the temporary skill boosts. So we have the beaver familiar and that will give you 2 invisible woodcutting levels which will also stack with the visible boosts. Here are the list of other visible woodcutting boosts but they're not really worth going after so don't even bother with this. Next thing we have are the woodcutting urns. Every urn has a crafting level requirement in order to add an earth rune towards this. Don't worry because it can actually be assisted however. By cutting trees it will fill the urns. When it's full, you can automatically teleport the urns, and don't forget to enable this in your gameplay settings. When teleported, it's essentially giving you a 20% XP boost overall, but no, it does not stack with bonus XP. If you completed the Nomad quest, you can get what is called the Urn Enhancer, and that will boost the XP from teleporting urns by 25%. Next up, we have the Perfect Juju Woodcutting Potion. Each dose will last 1 hour. There's a 5% chance of getting 2 cuts instead of 1 cut, which will award you full XP. If you do have perfect plus potion, well good for you, because this retains the effects, but it does require 99 herb lore and the Mailer Clan recipe. Unfortunately, just so you know, this does not work at divine locations. 
The next useful item we have are the skill Chompas. You'll get 5% more woodcutting XP on an unsuccessful woodcutting action, or 10% on a successful woodcutting action. You should consume around 1,500 Chinchampas per hour. I mean, this is really expensive to use, so it may not be worth it, but if you really want to buy these, then ideally, buy the cheapest Chinchampa at this moment. We also have the Log Splitting Scrimshaw, and that requires 70 woodcutting. There's a 15% chance to destroy a log for extra woodcutting XP, and that will last you 3 hours each. The superior version is untradeable, although it's made with 4 ancient bones in player-owned parts. This will buff the chance to 20%, lasting 4 hours each. Unfortunately, it does not work with Crystallize, Ivy, or the Crystal Trees. The second last useful item we have is the Lumberjack Aura. Based on the Aura tier, it will increase the woodcutting success by a certain percentage. So, the last useful item we have is Grace of the Elves. There are multiple different effects from this. First, you get to store 500 charges worth of sign of the porters. Second, there's a chance to spawn a Seren Spirit. And last but not least, it will half the prayer drain rate of Light Form Prayer. Now that I've talked about the useful items, let's get into the training methods. From 1 to 15, you'll cut regular trees. The closest location for regular trees to a bank would be the West Verrock Bank. I mean, try to use a Dorvan Army Axe here because it will cut faster, and you'll get more XP from doing this. As you can see right here, you'll have to run around and cut the logs. The XP per hour you can get for this is 15k. Then from 15 to 30, you'll do oak trees. Just like regular trees, this is in the exact same location. Now at this point, each tree yields multiple logs before it fully depletes. In this case, you'll get 20k XP per hour. From 30 to 35, you'll do willow trees. The closest location to a bank would be at Draenor Village. Honestly, this place was very nostalgic when I was a free-to-play player because it was so crowded. Anyways, you'll get 30k XP per hour from doing this. You'll do teak trees from 35 to 47. This is located in what is called the Taibuo Wanai Hardwood Grove. You can use the Taibuo Wanai Teleport Scroll, and that will take you outside this location. Otherwise, you're gonna have to go south from the Brimhaven Lodestone. In order to enter every time, it requires 100 trading sticks. Because teak logs are really cheap and you do need 100 trading sticks to enter every time, and not to mention that a bank isn't close by, you're better off dropping these teak logs. Well, unless you have Sign of the Porters, that is. Now, if you're an Iron Man character, cutting teaks is actually best for construction XP, well, aside from miscellanea, that is. You'll get from 40k to 50k XP per hour. Then from 47 to 68, or you can stop at level 81, you'll do Acadia Trees. This is located in the Imperial District of Menaphos. In order to access this, you have to complete Jack of Spades quests. Look, I understand a lot of people are going to be like, well Tony, not everyone likes doing quests. And I get it, but this is a low or mid-level quest, so you should really consider doing this. It has so many nice unlocks here. Anyways, you can also unlock the bank chest west of the Acadia Trees, but that will require 60k Imperial District reputation. You can stop at 68 if you want to AFK Ivy, or 81 if you want to do overgrown idols. Here are the XP rates with woodcutting urns, and this is based on your woodcutting level. Starting off at level 47, you can get 60k XP per hour, then at level 60, 75k XP per hour, at level 70, 88k XP per hour, and finally at level 80, 95k XP per hour. For those who have stopped at 68, you'll do Choking Ivy until level 81. The best location for this is either in Verrock or in Prif. The Verrock location is east of the Grand Exchange and on the north wall of the Verrock Palace. Those who have access to Elf City, well, this requires Plague's End and 75 woodcutting. What's really amazing about the Prif location is that once in a while there's this thing called a Voice of Saren and it will give you 20% XP boost. So yeah, you're just gonna chop the ivy and pretty much afk. You won't get any resources from this, so you do not have to worry about dropping anything. It used to be the best method until level 94, but it's better nowadays to stop at 81 because there's a better afk spot than ivies. Anyways, here are the xp rates with woodcutting urns. You'll start getting 78k xp per hour at 68, then at 75, 84k xp per hour. From 81 to 94, you'll do the Overgrown Idols. 
It's located in the south part of Brimhaven, which is west of the shipyard entrance. You can get there quickly by using the gnome glider to the shipyard. I mean, some people like to do the new Anachronia location, but this one is easier to navigate. Just like Ivy, you can pretty much AFK. Now, it's better to do this in a solo world since you can AFK even longer than that. The only thing you're gonna do is just chop the jungle vines around the overgrown idol. Once all the vines have been chopped, go to the other section within this map location, or you can wait 2.5 minutes for them to respawn. When it's fully chopped, you will get a random buff for woodcutting wood, which I mean is pretty minor, but it's still nice to have anyways. The XP per hour you can get for this is 100 to 130k. Then from 80 onwards, you'll do crystallized Acadia trees with the Lightform Prayer. Here is a slide for the requirements, the equipment, and the inventory setup. Now this requires the Light Within quest complete. For your equipment setup, you want to bring a crystal hatchet with Honed and Furnace perk, and obviously if you have the Sentinel outfit, well good for you because you can bring that as well. Then for Grace of the Elves, it will reduce the Prayer Drain rate. For your inventory, you want to have Crystallized Runes, Prayer Potions, and the Woodcutting Urns. I didn't explain everything on this slide, so just pause the video as I'll move on to the next section. Here is a strategy. You'll cast the Crystallize spell on the Acadia tree, then chop this. Each time you activate Crystallize, it will last 30 seconds. Crystallizing will give you more XP, but you will not get any resources. Also, don't forget to turn on your Lifeform Prayer and always watch your prayer points. So in my opinion, this is the fastest conventional method in the game, but it will require some attention and cost you some money. I do have a 1 hour footage of this, and I'll leave the link in the description. Here are the XP rates. Starting off at level 80, you'll get 200k XP per hour, then at level 90, 250k XP per hour, and finally at level 99, at least 290k base XP per hour. For those who want an AFK option, you can do Crystal Trees from 94 onwards. Now, the location varies based on the world, and there are four different location spawns for Crystal Trees. You can get to an active Crystal Tree by using the max skilled skill portal, which requires plagues in and at least one level 99 skill. If not, you can try this FC called Tree Hunt, and I'm pretty sure they're active still. Every two hours, the active tree location will change. Just like Ivy and Overgrown Idols, you can chop the Crystal Tree and pretty much AFK. When it comes to XP per hour compared to Overgrown Idols, it is slightly more XP per hour than that, but the location can be a little inconvenient. With that being said, the XP per hour you can get for this is 120k to 140k. There's another AFK method, and that is called Golden Bamboo. This is located in the Uncharted Isles of the Ark. In order to get there, it will require what are called supplies. You can flag a large island with at least 2 colonies daily, or just keep searching islands. Every colony will last 100 Golden Bamboo Logs. I would try to bring Sign of the Porters or Grace of the Elves Chargewood Porters because it will bake it for you. Now obviously I'm not going to explain the basics of the arc, but if you want a full arc guide, I do have one which I'll leave the link in the description. You can get at least 190k XP per hour from doing this, and it's even faster if you're doing what is called the arc contracts. And finally, the last conventional method I'll talk about is Curly Roots with Superheat Form. It's located in the Jadinko Lair Middle Room, which is south of Herbler Habitat. It requires the Light Within quest, 83 Fire Making, and 91 Prayer. So you're only going to chop the Curly Roots. If you chop the Straight Roots, you hardly get any XP. You have to chop the Curly Roots twice, and then it will finally burn it with Superheat Form. Sometimes you will notice that the Roots may uncurl or disappear, but if that happens, just move on to another route. As you can see right here, this is actually a pretty click intensive method. You will only get 75k woodcutting XP per hour, but you will also get 700k fire making XP per hour. This is only good if you're trying to train fire making at the same time as woodcutting. If all you care about is woodcutting XP, this should not be a primary method to train woodcutting. Yeah, because of this, I didn't really explain this in much detail, but if you don't understand what I'm trying to say, I do have a 1 hour footage which I will leave that link in the description. Here are the best methods to 120 woodcutting. First, we have the crystallized Acadia trees, and this is the fastest, but it does require attention and money. Then we have the crystal trees, which is very AFK, and you can do this without any sort of limitations. Unfortunately, this is the slowest method on the list. 
For Golden Bamboo, this is the fastest AFK method, but there are some daily limitations. Finally, for the Curly Roots, once again, it's only good if you also want fire making XP. I've talked about the regular training methods, so let's get into the other methods. First, I'll start with Divine Yew Trees. Yes, this is actually my favorite way to train woodcutting as a daily activity. It only requires 60 woodcutting, although I do recommend 62 divination in order to weave the daily Divine Yew Trees. This is actually the best divine location in the game because it gives you the most XP per day. In fact, you can get 87.5k woodcutting base XP per day at max cap if you're using double viswax. Your daily divine location cap is based on your total level. I believe it takes around 12 minutes to cap 500 divine yew trees. You can also throw in the memorial to Guthix perk, which is called shared knowledge. You'll get 25% XP but no yew logs. I mean yew logs are pretty cheap so you might as well just use this. See this is why divine use is my favorite method of all time when it comes to woodcutting. Here are the list of daily event times. The most reliable time would be World 48 Birthorp, and that is at reset time, but unfortunately, it requires 2600 total level. However, if you don't have 2600 total level, you can also try World 140 Birthorp, and that occurs at 1700 game time. The third option would be hopping worlds at the Garajo Resource Dungeon, but this requires 95 Dungeoneering. Last but not least, if you're not able to catch any of these three, you'll have to go to World 2 Birthor, but unfortunately, people don't drop Divine Yew Trees often enough. The next other method we have are Evil Trees. This is a daily woodcutting D&D, and you can chop two Evil Trees per day. The FC for tracking Evil Trees is Evil Tree FC. I think Evil Trees are very amazing as a daily activity, especially at the low and mid levels. I do have a full guide on this which is a little old, but it is still relevant. Gobi Bands This is similar to Warbands, although it's a safe PvP activity. You'll get up to 48.5k XP for free every day, and this should take you 3 minutes. The FC for tracking which world has which skills is called Mini Games. Now I do have a full guide on this, which I'll leave the link in the description. And finally, the last method we have is the Woodcutting Brawling Gloves. This is a super rare drop from the rare drop table, or you can get this from Wilderness Slayer. Each glove lasts 832 charges. I would say the best place to use the mat would be Golden Bamboo, or the second best use would be Divine Magic Trees in the Deep Wilderness. So this wraps up my 1 to 99 woodcutting guide for 2019. With that being said, just choose which method's right for you, and I wish you all the best training woodcutting. So yeah, thanks for watching, and I hope it helps. If I missed anything, feel free to ask. Also, be sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already, because I'll definitely do more updated 1-99 and 120 guides in the future.